Hi, I'm Adam. This is the Machine Tech video blog, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about compression packing. Anytime a shaft penetrates a fluid containing chamber, a leak path is created. Let's take this pump for example. It's driven by a motor and it's supported by bearings on the outside of the fluid chamber. But the impeller driven by the shaft has to be submerged in the fluid inside of the chamber in order to pump that fluid. That means that the shaft is going to have to enter the chamber in two places, here and here. Now, unless you want to flood the room and empty the piping system, those holes are going to need to be sealed. But they have to be sealed in such a way that the shaft can still spin freely with minimal friction. Now, there are two generally accepted devices used to accomplish this task. Mechanical seals and compression packing. Mechanical seals use two very flat and highly polished surfaces to create a gap so tiny that not even a single droplet of fluid can squeeze through. Compression packing, on the other hand, is pretty low tech. It's essentially just rope that's stuffed around the shaft and then compressed tightly to prevent excessive leakage. As we'll see in a moment, compression packing leaks constantly, it damages shafts, and it requires frequent adjustment and replacement. For these reasons, it's been supplanted by mechanical seals in most applications since the proliferation of mechanical seals in the 1950s. But because of the relatively low upfront costs of compression packing, it is still in use. In this video, we'll cover the basics and selection of compression packing, and we'll leave replacement procedures for a follow-up video. Compression packing is an ancient technology. As far back as 5,000 years ago, sailors were faced with a common problem. Boats and ships often have a rudder or a fixed pivoting oar at the rear of the vessel for steering. The rudder is connected by a shaft to a control handle called a tiller on the deck. If the rudder shaft penetrates the hull of the vessel below the waterline, then water can leak into the bilge. So ancient sailors solved this problem by taking old pieces of clothing, sailcloth, rope, and anything else they could get their hands on, covering it with animal fat or wax, and packing it into the gap around the shaft. Eventually, little box-shaped housings were constructed around the shaft, and a gland was installed which could tighten down against the packing material, compressing it and improving the seal. Thus, compression packing, the stuffing box, and the packing gland were born. As we can see in our example pump, this basic sealing mechanism has remained relatively unchanged for millennia. However, there have been some improvements in packing construction and materials. The compression packing available today typically has a square cross-section and is sold in standard sizes as individual pre-cut rings or in bulk quantities in large coils. There are multiple types of construction, including metal foil packing, for applications where other types of packing would be too soft and would tend to extrude out of the stuffing box. But the dominant type of packing has a braided fabric construction. Material options range from plant fibers, animal fibers, and mineral fibers to synthetic plastics and even metals. Flax is a plant fiber that's been the industry standard for many, many years. It's cheap, readily available, and it offers good sealing for general purpose applications. Synthetic aramid fibers, like DuPont's Kevlar, are even more abrasion resistant and they can handle higher temperatures and shaft speeds. Another common plastic is polytetrafluoroethylene, more commonly abbreviated as PTFE, or known by its trade name, Teflon. It has very good lubricity and excellent chemical resistance. Because it's non-reactive, it's often used in applications where process fluid contamination is completely unacceptable, like in the food industry. To help reduce heat generated from contact with the rotating shaft, this bulk fiber material is impregnated with some kind of a lubricant, like oil, grease, wax, graphite, or various synthetics. In the last 30 years, industry has embraced a mixture of PTFE and graphite impregnated with a high temperature lubricant that often goes by the trade name GFO. Now, although there's no one-size-fits-all packing solution, this material is about as close as it gets. It has a very wide range of applications and it boasts a very long life. 
but the trade-off is that it's ridiculously expensive. The many options for bulk fiber material and lubricant offer up an almost infinite number of combinations. In the end, packing selection comes down to operating temperature, sealing pressure, shaft speed, and chemical compatibility with the process fluid. But you should really ask your local vendor to determine which specific type of packing is right for your application. Because of the way that it forms a seal, compression packing has to grip the shaft tightly during operation, and this inevitably leads to all types of problems. Compression packing generates a lot of friction, and that puts strain on motors and produces large amounts of heat which must be dissipated. Maybe you've noticed that I've been saying that packing prevents excessive leakage, not that it prevents leakage entirely. That's because packing has to leak a little bit during operation. In an application where there's infrequent movement of the shaft, then the packing can be fully compressed to stop leakage entirely. Take this gate valve, for example. Actually, this one uses O-rings, but many gate valves do use compression packing to seal around the stem that raises and lowers the gate. But in reciprocating or rotating machines like our pump, some amount of leakage is necessary to lubricate and cool the packing. For non-synthetic materials, the leakage rate is about 15 drops per minute, and synthetic materials require a little more leakage, around 30 drops per minute. This persistent leakage is one of the unavoidable pitfalls of using packing as a seal, but without it, the packing would quickly burn up and stop sealing altogether. In order to further improve lubrication or to flush away a brace of grit and dirt, an external flushing line can be plumbed to the stuffing box. Now, usually this is just the process fluid plumbed directly from the fluid chamber, but if the process fluid is too abrasive or chemically incompatible to be used as a flushing fluid, an external fluid source can be used. It's usually water and it's pumped directly to the stuffing box. Now, external flushing lines typically go hand in hand with devices called lantern rings. A lantern ring is a metal or plastic ring with grooves and holes in it that's installed in the stuffing box in place of a ring of packing. Its job is to redirect the flushing fluid throughout the stuffing box, and therefore it should be installed so that it's in alignment with the flushing line port. Another unavoidable pitfall of using compression packing is the damage done by abrasive particles grinding against the shaft. Now these particles can come from the packing, from the process fluid, or somewhat surprisingly, from the shaft itself. You see, metals corrode to form oxides on their surfaces, whether it's iron oxide from steel, chromium oxide from stainless steel, copper oxide from bronze, or aluminum oxide from aluminum alloys, these oxides are extremely hard and abrasive. It's the same stuff used in abrasive grinding wheels. Contact between the shaft and packing causes the oxides on the surface of the shaft to embed themselves in the packing rings, which then grind grooves into the shaft. Eventually, the shaft will be so worn down that it'll have to be replaced. One way of dealing with this is to use a sacrificial sleeve which fits over the shaft and can be easily replaced when it wears down without having to replace the entire shaft. Perhaps the most frustrating thing about compression packing is that it needs to be adjusted periodically. During operation, lubricant squeezes out of the packing and the packing wears, which causes the leakage rate to exceed the minimum required for lubrication and cooling. So maintenance staff must regularly inspect the seal for excessive leakage and tighten the packing gland if necessary. When tightening the packing gland no longer effectively controls the leakage rate, then all the lubricant has been squeezed out and the packing needs to be replaced. Well, that's your introduction to compression packing, its function, its origins, its construction, and some of the considerations for its application. And that's it for today from the Machine Tech video blog. I hope you learned something.